reason why we innovate is because we're lazy. The human mind has developed things in order to make our lives easier, in order for us to have to do less work, in order for us to be able to enjoy life. And by enjoying, it means doing nothing. Why do we even bother on thinking about making an engine? Why even bother on make, about making something that will make us move faster? Making it to a somewhere faster? Well, it will take us less time, less work. It's going to be so much more comfortable for us. Take as an example, how much would you take from Bogota to Paris? Now, more or less 12 hours. If you didn't take a, an airplane and you went by boat, which is the only new way, the only old way to do it, you take eight days. Wouldn't you be tired? With the time, with the passive history, engines were made, and they have recently, and every single year, been innovated to be done better, fancier, and each time faster. One of the examples that became an extremely impressive and successful innovation was a Dodge Charger from 1969, RT440. In the 1960s, even though um, the American car company was trying to reduce its cost and its gas usage, they made their muscle cars. And one of the biggest emblematic cars is the Dodge Charger. Its gigantic, ridiculously big engine shows us how you can change a trend, how you can take everyone with a low guard, how you can make all the other companies think, why didn't we do this? Why, did they, why were they able to do it before? Italians have always been known for their excellent and exquisite taste for design. When the Lamborghini company was made, only its second model, the Lamborghini Miura, was, fir was first called the first supercar. It was the first car to be able to top the 300 kilometers per hour. This car got many prizes, not only because of its beautiful design, which intends to look like a woman. Its face is supposed to look as the eyes, as the eyelashes of a woman. But what was the problem with this car? They focused too much on innovating the design and not focusing on the engine. What would happen? You would be driving and your car would turn on fire. They suggest you should carry a fire extinguisher beside you. And the most recent car innovation is the Bugatti Veyron. The French-Italian company from Etoli Bugatti was able to take everyone by surprise and show them how an engine can also be done with 16 cylinders. It's new technology, it's incredible advance for the time. We were able to not only break the world speed record, but to beat it and keep hold of it until the time. It's able to go over 400 kilometers per hour for safety rank at 370, but well, it's a car with so much technology that had never been seen before on the streets. Some Formula, ones, Formula One cars had it, but not on the streets. There are different types of engines that across time have shown how things get constantly innovated, how people, how people have thought of new ways of doing this. At the beginning, in 1673, Experiments were made to think of engines, of way of moving things. These experiments failed because they used powder, and the engines would explode and kill the people around it. Later on, they tried plutonium as an alternative source of energy, but people, their users, would constantly get cancer, and you don't want a car that gives you cancer. Then, throughout history, many more engineers and many more thinkers saw that things had to be changed and that they had to be modernized. That's how the linear engines, B engines, opposite engines, and W engines came. Here we can see a B engine, which um, was the first variation from a linear engine, where it gives you much more energy and space, respecting the amount you can save. At the back, we can see a linear engine, the typical classic engine that each time, even though it hasn't changed as much, what they have done is change the materials, innovated, show that things can constantly be improved. Throughout history, engines have constantly changed. There is not one thing that doesn't change every single year. 
Every single year, there's something new. Every single time, engineers think of new things they can do, of new ways they can innovate their engines, of new ways they can make it faster to everywhere. everywhere. An example of why innovation is a, uh, a way of us being lazy, take Andrew, a businessman, who has to go to Tokyo for his job interview or to present his new project for a new building. It's much better and more efficient if he takes his 7 in the morning flight, makes it to Tokyo in the, the new Boeing 787 at 7 p.m. and does his job and then goes back to his house and sleeps. And if he had to take much more time doing paperwork, doing transport, and all, and all of this, this type, of, type of things. Engines are a clear show of how things have to be changed and how we think that it's a constant show of our weakness. We will constantly innovate because if we don't, we will work more, we will have to do more, and we will get tired. The final objective of life, as you can see, many cars are being made automatic with the robot. I mean, Google is making Google, um, robotic cars. In order for you, you just have to sit in the back chair and say, take me to that, this place. It doesn't make, take you any effort. It makes your life so much more comfortable, and it means your life will be faster and you will be able to do less things, doing more things. Now, one thing that you must remember is that every single time they tell you, stand up, stop being lazy, you're innovating because you're thinking of better ways of making your life more comfortable, of making not only your but other life more comfortable. Every single thing that we think of is innovating because it is intended to show us how we can change, to show others that there is no definite answer. We are taught in many places, this is the answer for this, and there's no other possible option. But you can show them by innovating, by changing their idea, by showing the world that there are many more options, many more possible ideas, many more chances of changing things.